Hello, my dears. Welcome back to My Main Stitches. I'm Jeannie J. Last time we talked about the four main sections of the pattern guide sheet. They were the pieces illustrations, the cutting layouts, general directions, and sewing directions. Those are the five, uh, four primary parts of any pattern guide sheet. So today we're going to look more closely at those general directions and look at some sample pattern pieces and compare some of the lines that we'll find on those pattern pieces with the general directions. And we'll follow that up with our first pattern, our pants pattern adjustment. So stay tuned and let's go. Okay, my dear, so here is an example of general directions from our pattern guide sheet. Let's talk just for a second about the, the pattern symbols that they have listed here and where you'll find them on your actual pattern pieces. The first symbol is the grain line. You'll find that on every pattern piece. And that is this line that runs up generally up the center of your pattern piece. That's the line that you want to always line up with the salvage line of your fabric. And that way your prints will all be in the same direction. Okay, prints or threads or whatever your grain is for that particular fabric. A uh, fold line uh, that looks like, you know, this kind of squared off uh, line with arrows on the edges. That just means to place that particular piece on the fold of your fabric and cut. I want to give you an example for that. Ours, this particular fabric uh, pattern doesn't have a fold line on any of our pieces for pajamas. But just for example, if we were taking our waistband casing here, you can see that on either end, this, this pattern piece is exactly the same. So if we folded that on that center line, you can see, I don't know if you can actually see through the piece on the camera, but there, both ends are exactly the same. So there would be, for an, an example, we could have a fold line here and um, put this edge, this fold edge on the folded edge of our fabric. So that's what that fold line means. The, um, you know, then there are other helpful lines, like the center line helps you to know what the center is of that piece and to be able to use that when you're lining things up when you're sewing. The notches are and dots are both used in a very similar way. You'll find notches and darts all over your, your pattern pieces. Those are to help you line things up. Um, there's a notch above there, and that would be, for example, where you might have your um, notch for your waistband. That's a waistband piece. So those notches when you're sewing will line up. The cutting line is the solid outside line on any fabric or any pattern piece. That solid line is the cutting line. Now on most patterns that have different sizes in the pattern, you'll have several different solid lines and you'll have yours um, usually marked, you'll know what your, what your line is regard, uh, based on your measurements and which size you're using in your pattern. Again, the solid lines are the cutting lines. These little, on this particular pattern, the um, lengthen or shorten line, this is an adjustment line. That's where you'll lengthen or shorten the pant legs, for example. Every pattern will have somewhere on that, in those general directions, uh, what your seam allowance is. In this case, it's 5 eighths inches or 1.5 centimeters. Uh, I always like to note that 5 eighths inches is 0.625 inches. That is what you'll use, um, what you'll sew. You'll set that on your machine. You'll sew your seam line five eighths inches in from the edge. And that is just a good number to note that most patterns will come with that as the standard seam allowance, unless, and like the pattern says here, here unless otherwise stated, this five eighths inch is 
what your seam is going to be. Okay, um, what else do we want to go over in general directions? We talked about the shorten and lengthen line. They're just showing you here how to actually do that, and we're going to do that in a moment. Uh, cutting and marking. Uh, this is something that's helpful to look over. Uh, you know, circle your cutting layout when you get ready to cut out your pattern. You know, you'll have different options in terms of how to lay the pattern pieces out. A good idea you is um, like what they're showing here. If you have different options, just go in and circle the one that you're going to be using. Like for us, I might circle the pants pattern. Um, the one that is for however wide my fabric is. Okay, and then um, this is another good one for double thickness fold fabric with right sides together. Just a note, I always fold mine with the wrong sides together because when I'm going in and marking these dots, I can mark them both at the same time on the wrong side of the fabric. Uh, it's a little easier for me to work that way. And I know that the patterns flush out exactly the same because they are uh, still being cut out exactly the same. But again, that's just the suggestion from the pattern makers. Um, those are some really good things to look over and review. Um, it also gives you some tips down here for sewing directions when you're sewing a curve. If you want that to lay down smoothly, you want to go back in and cut small notches or slits into that seam allowance edge. And that way when you fold your fabric, in this case probably a collar or something like that, when you fold it inside out, it will lay down more smoothly for you to press it. Those are, those are tips from general directions, okay? And a couple things I wanted to show you in addition to those general directions were uh, just talking about some of the different lines and information that you can find on your pattern pieces. For example, the finished garment measurements are listed here on this pant leg piece. This is the front of the pants, pajama pants, and this is the back piece of the pajama pants. And they list here each size and the finished length. That's how I knew that my pattern length was going to be like six inches too long for what I needed it to be. So um, later on, we'll go back and we'll make the adjustment for length. Okay. Um, so yeah, you see again, the dots, the notches, and the different lines of informational lines. This is the crotch line for uh, the pant piece. This would be the waistband and on the bottom of the piece down there, you'd see the the hemline or actually we're putting a uh, cuff on the bottom. So that's just so you know where everything is. Um, to talk, to start to talk to you a little bit about adjustments, uh, another thing that I did is look at the order of adjustments for our, uh, for making any kind of pants really. I use the information from our book, um, the uh, the Singer book for sewing pants that fit. And this is their suggested order of how to make pants adjustments. And it does make sense when you start to do this, you'll realize, for example, you want to do your crotch depth adjustments uh, first before you go back and put in any wedges um, because this is going to be a lot smaller once you've already done this. Now that'll make sense later, but for now, just so you know, or have a sense of the order, it's always LWC. It's always the length adjustments first, that being the crotch length, meaning if the waistband and the crotch depth is too long or too short, you'll need to adjust the pattern. The length of the pants for your hem, you'll want to adjust that to shorter or longer if you need to, according to how long your measurements were from your waist to your ankles. Um, with adjustments would be next. If you want it or needed to adjust the waistline width, the hips of the width, hips, <laughs> the hips width, let's get that right. Uh, sometimes uh, people make adjustments for knees, rather uh, they have like bow legs or knock knees or something like that. You can do that 
adjustment, second width of width adjustments. And these are the order of adjustments within width. And this is the order of adjustments within the length adjustments. So last, you'll always do your crotch wedges. And we'll talk about what that is later, but just so you know, like if you have, um, um, you know, a, a seat, uh, they call it the seat, but if you need to adjust for butt, you know, whether you need to take in some or let some out to get that fit just right for the seat, those types of things would be the last uh, adjustments that you make. Okay, so let's go back up to crotch depth. What we want to do at this point to do our first adjustment and start to consider how to do adjustments is to always look at our um, pants adjustment chart and decide from that chart and the final measurements of the pattern piece what the difference would be. For me, for example, I know that my crotch depth was uh, comfortably, whoa, excuse me, for this pajama pants, I wanted it to be about 11 inches deep. So I'm gonna to need to take off two inches from the front pattern piece and the back pattern piece um, so that that will be a good fit for me. And again, you can tell by the little chart here. This little chart isn't in the book. I made this chart because it's helpful for me to have a checkbox of or checklist of how I'm doing these adjustments. So a length would be the first adjustments to make. Crotch depth, then legs, and then front pattern piece and then back pattern piece. So to give you an example, I knew that my crotch was too long and you can see here on this piece that the top of the waistband to the crotch line for me was about, or for this pattern piece was about 13 inches and I wanted it to be uh, about 11 inches for me. So I marked a line halfway between the crotch line and the waistline. I marked a line. I made a straight line on the front piece and on the back piece. And you can barely see it, but I use a green, uh, this is where our gel, our fun gel pins that we have get come into effect. But I used a green gel pen and marked that line halfway between the crotch line and the waistband. And I can come now and fold that line down like so. And I'm gonna go back and do this straight. But after I get that line folded in the way that the adjustment is made, I will use scotch tape. Isn't my cute little scotch tape? This bits are adorable. <laughs> so that's when we would use our scotch tape to tape down that adjustment so that when we come back later uh, and make other adjustments on top of that, it's a little easier to do. And or when we cut out this actual pattern piece from our fabric, the adjustments stay in place when we tape them down with a little tape. Okay, so that concludes our chat today. Our first adjustment, you did it, the crotch depth adjustment. And next time we'll talk about the next adjustment which would be for length. And I'm definitely shorter than my pattern. So we'll, we'll learn how to shorten that adjustment there later. But again, these adjustments work similar, rather you're lengthening or shortening. If I was, if I had a, um, someone who had a measurement from their crotch to waist, a comfortable measurement that they want it to be longer, I would just cut that line and separate the pieces out a little bit. So that's it for crotch depth adjustment. I'm gonna actually do and make, fold the piece and tape it down and then go on to the next adjustment in the next video. Thanks for joining me.